If you've been thinking about using content marketing for your business, or if you just want to use it better, then this is the video for you. But you're not just gonna learn from me. This is a summarized version of my one hour conversation with expert marketer and co-founder of Orbit Media, Andy Crestadina. I talked to him on my podcast, School of Content, so you'll see tons of clips of him throughout this video. Real quick, I'm Clint Malley. I teach people how to create art for a living through content marketing so that they can love the work that they do. All right, let's get right to it. First, we need a working definition for content marketing. So I asked Andy to explain it in a way that even a five-year-old could understand. Content marketing is a strategy where a company publishes usually helpful, useful articles not just articles, but let's simplify it for the five-year-old, uh, as a way to attract attention from people who can advocate th for them, people who might refer business to them, or people who might one day need their services. It's about being helpful on the internet, usually teaching something. Teaching and creating content positions your business or brand as the expert. If you show someone how to do something that makes their life better, then they are more likely to trust you for another problem. Now, I'd be doing you wrong if we didn't address the other type of marketing out there, talking about advertising. Every cold call, every piece of direct mail, every YouTube interstitial, every banner, every pop-up, those are all distractions. Advertising is distraction marketing. Content marketing is just, is the other type. There's two kinds of marketing, ads and content. Content marketing is the other type of marketing. It's not the hammer, it's the magnet. It's gonna, you pull your audience toward you. You're there when they need you. And if we're honest, we know that even the best marketers don't enjoy commercials or advertising. They are distracting. They pull you away from the thing that you want to focus on. Okay, with that out of the way, I think that it's important for us to understand the connection between teaching and content marketing. I was trained to be a teacher too. I got certified to teach in college. I was going to be a foreign language teacher. I learned all about pedagogy and curriculum development and learning styles. And then found this and thought, wow, yeah, that makes sense. That's how it works. This is why people pay attention, why they care, why they click, why they visit, why they subscribe. As Andy mentioned, much of content revolves around teaching people. You are only truly an expert in your craft when you can explain how to do something. To break this down, I'm gonna go over the four levels of expertise and how this relates to content marketing. All right, for level one, this is where you can recognize the difference between quality and something that is not quality. And many of us can do this. We do this naturally. This is what it means to be a spectator. If you go see a movie, people are really quick to give their opinion if something is good or bad. Level two is where you can explain why something is quality versus not quality. Now you can point to specific reasons and examples about why something is good or bad. This is usually what it means to be a hobbyist or a connoisseur. Now this is more than a spectator because they have reasons to back up their opinion. They're invested. Level three is where you can create or do quality stuff. You can use your knowledge to make things or do things that are quality. Now you are a practitioner. You're no longer in the stands. You're actually in the arena. Level four is when you can teach others to create or do quality stuff. Here, you can break things into parts and show someone how to do each part until they can do a whole thing. Now you are an expert or a guide. This is where the arena has become the classroom. And content marketing is really just a big classroom. You're helping people survive in the world. You're trying to make their life better. Which brings us to our next part, the purpose of content marketing. You can do it through strong opinion. You can do it through, uh, through by publishing research. You can do it by, um, you know, just there's, there's uh, this being entertaining. But mostly it's about attracting attention, building awareness by publishing things that are adjacent to the actual service that you offer. Now, I used to be an educator. I have a master's in teaching. I taught high school and middle school language arts for a number of years. And in the classroom, I taught students a lesson called author's purpose. The goal was to explain why the author would write something. 
But this same principle applies to content marketing. Basically, all content falls into three domains. The first domain is entertain, where you're making someone feel some sort of emotion. Now sure, this can be laughter, but this can also be things like tragedies, or if you go see a scary movie, that's also a form of entertainment. The second part of author's purpose is to inform, to teach or explain some information or convey a thought. And these are, you know, helpful articles, how-to guides, and walkthroughs. And the third part of author's purpose is to persuade, to convince someone to your point of view. This can be through testimonials, case studies, editorials, or opinion pieces. All authors, and therefore all content, does at least one of these three things. And the best content does all three. Think Pixar. Every Pixar movie makes you laugh and or cry, teaches you a lesson, and then convinces you that that lesson that they taught you is something that you should live your life around. So you're like, okay, okay, I hear you. But maybe you're not sure if content marketing is right for your specific business. Exactly. Well, I'm gonna let Andy Crestedina explain how content marketing has helped him grow his business with zero advertising dollars. This is a 50 person, $7 million a year in revenue business uh, that was started by two people, me and my buddy from high school, roommate from college. Uh, and we were just this scrappy little company. And once we realized how search engine optimization, social media, email marketing, and influencer marketing all combined into this one practice, we just got so much more fun and so much more interesting and so much more effective to combine these things. And yes, this is a brand, one of many, there's a lot, it's not weird, uh, but one of many brands that is built completely on an organic inbound marketing, content marketing strategy, zero dollars spent in advertising. Now, to be fair, there are some pros and cons to content marketing. It's not easy. It's more like the long game. There is no arguing that. Content marketing is a slower approach. Uh, search optimization is a slower approach. These are not fast ways to build an audience. Uh, but unlike advertising, advertising is temporary. You stop paying, ad disappears. Content marketing is durable. Everything I've ever published is still online. So there's a famous quote from Guy Kawasaki that I sometimes use in presentations to help make the point. It says that if you have more money than brains, do outbound marketing. If you have more brains than money, do inbound marketing. Maybe you're bought in, but you're like, okay, where do I even start? Getting started in something new can feel scary, even if you've been in business for a while. However, Andy lays out three super practical steps that you can use to create a solid foundation, no matter where you are at in your content marketing journey. Step number one is to create an awesome website. Think about creating a great mousetrap to attract mice or a flower garden to attract bees. That your service pages are themselves search optimized for a phrase that you have a chance of ranking for, that there's evidence and testimonials and data points on every one of your pages, that your site is disarmingly personal and human with faces of your team, and that you're answering people's top questions, the sales questions they ask before they buy, that you put that those answers uh, and address those objections on your sales pages. Step number two is to create a few super detailed and surprisingly helpful pieces of content. This could be original research, but the goal is to position yourself as a primary source for new and good information around the topic that your business or brand is connected with. Think about creating your greatest hits, the things that your customers will need to be educated about in order to buy your product or service. You need something to share with other people and for other people to link back to. Remember, hold no secrets back. The person who helps the most wins. Step number three is to write content for everybody else. Crestedina recommends that about 75% of your content should be written for other people's websites, especially early on. I went on a guest blogging tour where like the majority of my articles for three years was on other websites. I made a list of all the sites I wanted to write for, made me a better writer, did tons of networking with editors, built lifelong relationships. Guest blogging or writing for other websites is important for two reasons. One, your content will immediately become more visible because you are borrowing other people's audiences. 
And two, you will build your backlink profile and increase your domain authority. And if you're like, yo, what the heck is domain authority? I'm so glad you asked. Let's do a little mini lesson. A domain authority is a number between one and 100 that increases depending on how many other websites link to your website. If a website with a high domain authority of 70 links back to you, then this is an even bigger boost than if a website with a domain authority of 12 links to you. It's also helpful if the website is connected to your industry. It's like becoming cool and popular because other cool and popular kids have said that they like you. This domain authority number is a little different depending on which SEO or search engine optimization tool that you use. Href, SEMrush, Moz all have similar domain authority checkers. You can use yours for free by using Moz's domain analysis tool, which I'll link up in the description box, or downloading their free Mozbar Chrome extension. All you have to do is enter in your domain and it will give you your number. It'll even tell you which websites are linking to you with a high domain authority and some of your top competitors. The Mozbar Chrome extension allows you to type in a URL or a keyword phrase on Google and see the domain authority of all the top ranking results. Now, before you go hustling to create a whole bunch of content, we do need to talk about how you build up an audience and why that needs to be something that you do from the beginning. In the supply and demand game, we often focus on the supply. Build the thing. This is like the field of dreams approach. If you build it, they will come. But listen, that ain't true. Andy explains that focusing on the product can actually be harmful when trying to gain early traction. They call it minimum viable audience. Everyone knows about minimum viable product, like startups try to create the MVP approach, make something that's useful to someone and start to get feedback on it. But what is success? It's when the minimum viable product meets the minimum viable audience. So there's a lot of authors and thought leaders in content marketing that say, build the audience first, you know, start there. Build, and then you're interacting with them. You're getting feedback. You learn what they care about. You, you know, you're networking, you're building relationships with other creators that you can collaborate with. So it's almost definitely a mistake to start by building an online course. Uh, why not start by teaching and seeing which of your lessons get the most traction how you can repackage, repurpose those into a, a course later on. You know, who's going to get better results? Someone that launches a course and then spends three years trying to promote it? Or someone who builds an audience for three years and then launches a course based on what their audience responds to? Same amount of time, three years. One of those people is going to have a big launch. One of them is going to hear crickets. Bueller. 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 I get it, I get it. What if you post your video on YouTube or you post this blog and it gets no views or no traffic? What then? What if it doesn't go viral? Content doesn't always have to get thousands of views to be successful. Sometimes it can just help you run your business better. Content can have multiple uses. Creating content on how you do a thing in your business helps other business owners learn a process helps your employees remember a process, and it helps potential clients understand your process. Another reason why you should create content, even if it doesn't get thousands of views, is because it's just more equitable. As a teacher, I learned that not everyone learns the same way. Creating content in multiple mediums allows advanced learners to listen to your presentation at 2x speed, save time, and boost productivity. A video can also be rewatched and referenced for newer learners. Having your process written down or explained through a diagram is a great way to ensure that people can visualize your thoughts. Doesn't that remind you of like learning to be a teacher and going through those, the teacher certification process or whatever, where you learn like different learning styles? Every, every different audience is going to visit this stuff. You know, you can't, you can't rely on them being um, experiential or visual or whatever. You got to give them content in all different formats. You're just much more likely to be remembered that way. Th that's an example of something that isn't trackable. There's no metric for that. How many people are you top of mind for? <laughs> you know, there's no, that's not a visible metric, but that is actually what we're trying to do here is to be top of mind and to do something memorable. Also, a really basic thing, but it needs to be addressed, is that your content is shareable. You cannot scale yourself, but your content can. Content allows your friends and coworkers to share helpful or entertaining content 
that your business creates. And people like to share content because it elevates their status. If I can connect you with a resource that makes your life better, then you think more highly of me. Suddenly I become the person who knows where to get answers, even if they're not the answers that I came up with. In the age of Netflix and YouTube, you're thinking, yo, how do I even stand out? There's already so much stuff. Am I too late to this party? You may think that you have nothing new to add to the world, that you don't have a hot take on your industry. The truth is that you don't need one. You can always do more, and more doesn't always mean bigger. It can be more simple, more helpful, more visual, more entertaining, or just more human. To emphasize that more simple point, Andy tells an amazing story of an article that he wrote that got a ton of traction about a topic that he didn't really come up with. Joe Polizzi from Content Marketing Institute, founder of Content Marketing Institute, um, introduced and popularized this idea of writing a content marketing mission statement. And he had kind of this framework for it, which was sensible and, and it really influenced a lot of us. Uh, my version of it later was really boiled down. It's like, you need three things. Your content marketing is where audience X finds information Y for benefit Z. What's in it for them? Benefit Z. And this like XYZ template thing that I made ended up becoming more successful, more popular, I think, than Joe's original lesson. Weirdly, I almost feel bad. I really respect him. But what did I do? I just made it simpler. So that's, that's it's a huge point. It's really important. And, and in the world where people think they got to go deep and just like bury their audience with 10,000 tips and let's... What, what do 85 bloggers think of email marketing? Like, no, distill it down because we're all in a hurry. Also, you don't have to be in this game alone. Real content marketing is collaborative. The best content marketers do not create content in a vacuum. They do it with other content marketers. Here are some amazing reasons of why you should reach out to other people when creating content. The first is that you'll learn things. When you get other people's opinions and perspectives, you see things from a different point of view and you, as a result, get a more clear picture. So I wrote, the, I wrote that article about the content marketing mission statement. And not only did I want to credit Joe, but I reached out to him and that article has like a mini interview with Joe. I've got question, answer, question, answer. Like I want his brain in this content because I learned from him. Interacting with him while creating that new updated article, I learned from him. I learn by reading my own blog because I have voices of other people. I reach out to experts and they teach me things in, during my mini collaborations. The second thing is you build your network. There is more than enough to go around. Talking to other practitioners in your industry only sets you up as a thought leader. Now you're the person with connections. You end up building your network. You become more relevant. These are people you can keep in touch with. And in the long run, to win links from other websites, you need relationships with other content creators. The third reason is that it boosts your content's reach. When you feature other people in your content, they are more likely to share your stuff. They will put your content in front of eyes of people who have never heard of you. But then finally, it's good for your traffic because collaborative content gets better social engagement. Uh, when you post this thing, you can mention the collaborators they get tagged, right? They get they get they get a notification, and they're very likely to engage in the content. They're very likely to share it. It's not. It, it ends up becoming. Um, they call it ego bait. The next thing is that collaborative content is more diverse. Being sure to include folks with a different gender, race, or just an overall outlook than you helps your content to be more inclusive. Diversity makes for healthier and better content. So not only would I never write an article without using a contributor quote, at least one. Our, our new role, thanks to Amanda, is to always use female. We have a female contributor in every article we write. A journalist would never write an article without including a source. Why would we write an article without a contributor quote? Content marketers, I think, should never do that. Every article should have contributors in it. Why not? Cost nothing, grows your network, improves the quality of their content, and improves social reach. But then also, while you're doing this stuff, uh, it's it just becomes more fun. It's a collaborative effort. Like, you feel good. At, you'll, you'll enjoy the job more. Another reason why you should reach out to people is that you're going to make them happy. When you reach out to people and position them as an expert on a topic, you make their day. Everyone wants to have their viewpoint valued. 
So don't feel like you're pestering someone when you reach out to them for a quote contribution for a blog or to collaborate on a podcast or video. Maybe you're all in, you're like, yo, I'm good with this, but there's that whole pesky thing of like, when do I actually do this? How do you find time to create content and run a business? And as co-founder of a multi-million dollar business and as the father of two young kids, Andy has some sage advice to drop on us. If content marketing is going to be a big part of your growth and success strategy, then it needs to be factored into your workday. If you took it as seriously as you took other parts of your business, like payroll, then you wouldn't blow it off. This is critical. I'm going to take it. I'm going to treat it like it's critical. I know that I'm just planting seeds, but I, if I'm going to eat in two years, I need to have, I need to plant some seeds now. The second thing is that you need to set time apart. Andy, like myself, wakes up early to get his writing done. I do my writing between 5.45 and 7 a.m. I do it all the time. I do it every day, almost every day, right? I do a lot of work. I get up early before the kids get up. And, I, and so I just design my life to do that, to have that set aside. The third part about using your time well is to delegate. You don't have to do every part of the content creation process. Maybe you write the script and someone else films it. Maybe you edit the podcast and someone else creates the visuals for the blog post. What's important is that with all your content, that it directs people to your website. It contributes to adding words on your website for SEO, and it helps you run and promote your business. Listen, if this video brought you any kind of value, or if you have a question about anything related to content marketing, go ahead and leave us a comment in the comment section below, and I will get back to you. Also, feel free to check out my full conversation with Andy Crestedina via the School of Content podcast. He explains stuff like how he got into content marketing and even how he failed out of his first semester of college, just like me. Let's put the art back into content marketing. I'll see you on the next video.